This is the great one, the ultimate driving machine. And if you don't know what that means, you're excused. But if, when you see this car, you're seized with an uncontrollable urge to plant yourself behind the wheel and head for the wide open spaces, then we're talking to you. The great one is an idea on wheels. The idea that there's more to driving than just moving from place to place in isolated indifference. The great one is 400 cubic inches of glistening engine. The great one is a superb road handling chassis. The great one is bucket seats, carpeting, and a walnut-styled instrument panel. The great one is Pontiac GTO for 1967. Isn't it time you decided to ride the wide track winning streak? Great one is here. Hi guys, I'm gonna apologize in advance for the fans kicking off and on down here, just like that right now. Uh, it is right five below zero here outside, and it's about sixty-two in my basement, so uh the uh, auxiliary heater is kicking off and on, and the furnace is running almost non-stop. It's supposed to get down to like minus, uh, like minus 10 or minus 15 tonight. Uh, it's going to be like this for the next several days, uh, which really puts a cramp on my model building, but hopefully it will be warm up later up the week that I can do some painting. Anyway, uh, this is an update on our uh, Lucasy channel, uh, our Lucasy model car headquarters uh, Facebook group uh, polish a turd 67 AMT MPC GTO um, in the last video I talked about but forgot to show um, some of the decals that I have in my stash that I'm going to be using on this kit uh, I decided to save the uh, photo etch parts I showed in the last video for another build I'm going to uh, I've got one of the uh, the gold box kits that comes with the the flat hood in my stash uh, actually it's not in my stash yet it's coming it'll be here Tuesday and I'm going to do a uh, do a Le Mans with that so I wanted to save the photo etch kit for that because I'm going to deck it all out but anyway already waffling um, from I think it's a company called The Last Detail is a, a de aftermarket decal set this is actually for the 64 to 66 GTO but it has a lot of the things that we would need um, it has our uh, decals for our GTO badges. It has some nice um, license plate and license plate frames. It does come with uh, a series of instruments. Um, we've got several of the badges for like the uh, the door cards and uh, and the fender badge on here. Um, we got plenty of our arrowheads, uh, some underhood badges. I've cut a few things out of here. License, a couple of license plates, some of the uh, some of the uh, 6.6 .6 badges I've cut out and used on other builds, but we'll use some of those on this one. It also, if you're doing 64, 66, you've got some pinstripe you can use. Now. And this one's also got parts missing from it because I've been using it on this kit as well as others. Um, you can find these a lot of times on eBay as a separate purchase uh, from people parting out kits. But this is from the Revell 66 Pontiac GTO. And it is a really good decal set. It has all your badges on it. Um, it has the the instrument cluster as a decal. It has the de the wood grain dashboard as a decal. It has the uh, the dash badge stripe 
with the chrome trim that goes over the uh, glove box on the dashboard so it has all the badges it even has you'll never be able to see it on there but it has and I've used the black one already it has a black and a white uh, H pattern shift it for the for the top of the, uh, the gear shift it has the PMD badge for the uh, center of the of the steering wheel on the uh, on the 66 which does it different on the sec 67 had a different steering wheel so you can't use that but again it has all our GTO that would be like one for the the one for the front grill for the rear deck and they're in the, the other ones I've got are in the in the bag because I've used several of these sets so there's some more of the so here's some more of the GTO stuff uh, and there are, and this is basically a third a third one of these I've, I've used a ton of the decals before um, but it has the pinstripes again which you wouldn't use in it but it does have some neat uh, again neat license plates on it uh, and this one is from the earlier version of the same kit uh, which comes with the which I've used because I built this kit, the 66, so I've used most of the decals, but you get, comes with all the badges and license plates. It does come with the optional decals to do the red line tires. If you buy the later version of the kit, it already comes with the red line tires. That's why they're not on, on this decal set, because the kit comes with the red line tires. But it also has, uh, which you can't, won't we'll probably just catch the, the gloss of a it has, if you want to do uh, white letter tires, it has the uh, the Goodyear lettering there, which I may may put on the other one. I haven't decided. So those are the decals I've got. So I've got everything badge wise. So I took all the badges off the of, off the body. But before we get to that, let's move to our next part. which will be our interior and I'll, I'll put some stills up of this but as you can see there we've got the decal on the dash from the 66 decal set we've got the GTO let me zoom in on this a little bit see if I can there we go so we've got the say the, uh, the trim strip on it for above the glove box with the DTO logo on it. To put that on, you do have to cut the, uh, the chicken strap off, but that's all right. I'd rather have the the badge striping. It does also come with just the uh, the GTO logos if you wanted to if you wanted to keep the chicken strap on the molded on chicken strap and just paint the rest of it in. So there is our our dash. It doesn't exactly line up with the with the 67 where it's molded uh, but it's, it's close enough for government work so the dash gauges don't exactly line up because I put the gauges where they were supposed to be on the dash but then the, the wood grain part doesn't exactly line up and we, but we use the wood grain detail, decal my 67 GTO had a Hurst dual gate ray shifter in it and it had it came with the red instead of the wood grain most of them have a wood grain console it, it was red it was red anodized um, I guess it was part of the Hearst package on it so every time I do a 67 GTO I always do that uh, red red glove box console package for to kind of honor my car which went to an early grave but we uh Got our seat belts painted there. We did did those in a glossy satin black. We used the peel and stick uh, felt to do our our carpeting, which turns out when it works out really well. I mean, there's a few boo boos in there right there on the hump, but once it's, once it's in the body, you're never going to see it. Uh, the seats came from the six, the front seats came from the '67 Javel kit. So those are those. So that's our interior, which is done. 
basically I could hand paint this that's why it was being so cold I could get it done uh, we'll move on to the next part Glide back out here Basically, this entire part is all from the 67 Chevelle kit. This is the chassis pan, rear suspension, tires. The only thing basically here that is not from that kit are the wheels. The tire, or the back tires are from the kit, but not the wheels inside. And then the, uh, we'll show on, get to the other side. We built a custom pan to fit on the front of the uh, core support to fill in the, the hole, which I'll show you in a minute how that fits in. Uh, the engine is pretty much 99% from the Chevelle. Uh, we made a custom intake for this one because I needed it to be short. Uh, so we used actually the blower blower base of the intake for from the from the GTO kit and then the upper section of the high-rise manifold from the Chevelle kit to mount the two twin carbs on and then we put the breathers on top of there and then uh, one thing I like to do is get in here when you see it this big it's kind of funky but uh, let me back out so I can find it again we used uh, athletic tape to do my filters on my breathers. I think it looks kind of cool. I mean, I'll go through here with the quick pass with the lighter and like those little threads here that are sticking up will will all disappear. And then I used my 22 thousandths solder with the drilled out the kit distributor. To glued in the nine pieces of 22,000 solder and I painted them the colors I wanted to do do my ignition and then uh, I was going to do a, a ignition pack for it but I decided not to the uh, the coil on, on this this era of GM cars was usually mounted down on, on the back of the engine right above the bell housing for the uh, with a torque converter, flywheel, pressure plate, clutch, whatever, depending on what kind of car you had. So that's what we did there. Uh, we did wire up our battery as well. So the, header, the headers came from the Chevelle kit. So this, And the motor I painted with the uh, testers IC blue. And that's the stock. Uh, so basically a stock Chevelle engine other than modifying the intake manifold. In the first video we talked about cutting out the transmission tunnel for the chassis to fit into, which it does. It drops right in here. It fits right down inside. And we'll go right in right into the body of the car without any issues. For the wheels. We used, from the parts box, actually these came out of the, uh, the AMT Firebird, 80's Firebird that uh, I just recently rebuilt, the rebuilder from Acme. Uh, these were one of uh, the, op were the optional wheels in that, in that kit, well I didn't use either, either, it was either wheels from that kit, but these were the ones from that kit. Uh, these tires I pulled out of my bag of loose tires from Gus, so God knows where they came from. I said the rears are the are the street slicks from the from the Chevelle kit. So I may or may not put those uh, Goodyear decals on there. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But anyway, that's that's the body or chassis. We've got the body um, in primer. I managed to get that done before the the bottom fell out of the world on, on the temperature here so I'm I can't paint it yet 
Uh, but so we've got it. And to me, a white primer. The only badge I left on it was the uh, was the fender badge. After we bare metal foil that, and we'll put a decal over the top of that, because it'll give it the nice three dimensional uh, appearance that it should have. I took off the side fender side badges, the trunk badge, and for the GTOs, you get rid of the Pontiac. In between the tail lights, uh, if you're doing a Tempest or Le Mans, then that what you would leave that on there. You would get rid of the GTO parts, but you would leave that Pontiac there. So, so we've got this painted, or not painted, primed, and ready to go into the into the paint booth as soon as we get temperatures that are warm enough to allow me to do that. Let me see if I. Can. I won't, be able to, I won't be able to do this on camera. We'll be right back. I'll put the body, body together. We're back. I stuck stuck the body on the chassis. Um, you see how it fits. The wheels are just perfect where they need to be. And there's our engine bay with that added on cover or pillar panel, whatever, however you want to call it. This is where the where the hood latch and stuff would have been originally on a, on a plate here. So since we're doing it kind of custom, we did that in the aluminum. And that'll that'll fit right on there. We'll turn it over so the chassis chassis drops right in. The only thing is it is a little bit short but that's okay you're not going to see that side very much anyhow especially once the uh, once the bumper is on there so that's how that fits right now it's rocking and rolling a bit but it, I don't have the body squared down I don't have the chat uh, interior lined up exactly right but if I take when I take the body off it does sit it does sit square, but right now it's rocking a little bit. I just have to adjust it once we get it together. So there's that. Here's our hood. I did leave the arrowhead on the front, but I got rid of the uh, the ridge between the scoop and the arrowhead. I got rid of that. So that's I took took that off um, just because I wanted a little cleaner look. On um, this one, I'm not going to put. Normally, I go ahead and put the uh, the hood tack on, but on this one, I am not going to. Or if I do, we'll do it uh, afterwards, and it'll make it. I'll make it a contrasting color. I haven't exactly decided on my color yet. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards a yellow, but I'm not 100 percent positive on that yet. So that's that. Um, It's been so cold I can't really work on much, but I have got the front grill finished. So we put the Gur or the Tiger. Uh, in case you didn't know, the, the Tiger was kind of the mascot of the GTO. Uh, and from the advertising campaign back in the 60s, um, we did do our, we blackwashed the the chrome grill parts we didn't put those inserts in uh, I never have liked those and then uh, like I say we, we cut it showed in the last video I cut out those openings there in the bumper that should have been open and then to make my headlights look better I, I put uh, UV resin over the over the lenses and then uh, obviously cured that out so they don't look quite as as chromey they still look like chrome molded chrome headlights but they're not quite as bad um, so that's where we're at there's one more piece but I don't want to show that until the final reveal um, I 
few select people have seen it, but I'm going to keep that part kind of hidden to the final. So hopefully this week it'll warm up to at least to like 30 degrees and I'll be comfortable painting. And I'm right now, I'm still having 100, so I haven't 100% decided on the color, but I'm leaning towards either a lemon yellow or a chrome yellow, but that may all go go out out the door by the time I'm ready to paint we may end up with it with an odd with a lime green I, I don't know but right now I'm shooting the color I have sitting here for it is TS 47 chrome yellow but whether we stick with that I don't know we will find out in the final reveal which should be hopefully uh, the end of the week early next week say if the weather warms up enough for us to to finish it well and so for before I waffle on anymore there'll be some build pictures at the end of the video and uh, I want to say stay warm good morning good evening good night depending on where you are in the world when you watch my video and we will see you on the next one bye